Today, we want to unroll the unit circle. We want to start looking at the graphs of sine and cosine, the sinusoidal graphs. These are great graphs because they're going to, they're graphs that's, that are going to go up and down and up and down and up and down in nice regular intervals. And they're a great basis for modeling things that we observe out in the world that go up and down and up and down. So, but first, we need to turn our degrees into radians. So let's just quickly go through the unit, go around the unit circle and remind ourselves of the degree and radians and then the sine and cosine going around the circle. So you'll notice I color coded, I don't know if the, I hope the colors show up. Mm. I color coded the 30, 45, and 60 and the quadrant angles. So let's just hit the 30s first. So I have a 30 degree angle. And since 30 is 180 divided by 6, 30 is pi over 6 radians. The next 30 degree, the 30 degree angle in the second quadrant is 30 degrees behind 180. So that's going to be 150 degrees. And that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 6 radians. So that's the counting style that I, we, I mentioned in the discussion where we were learning radian measure. So it's gonna be 130, two is 60, three is 90, four is 120, and five is 150. Then 180 is six pi over six, and then 210, that's our the 30, uh, 30 degree angle, sorry, 30 degree reference angle in quadrant three. That's gonna be seven pi over six, because pi uh, 180 is six pi over six, so 210 is seven pi over six. 8 pi over 6 is actually a 60. 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, all those can be simplified. And then we get to 11 pi over 6 at 330 degrees. Also notice at 1130s is 330. So we need to know the sine and cosine. So I'm going to list them as coordinates of each of these points. So the coordinates on the unit circle, the coordinates are x is the cosine of theta and y is the sine y is the sine of theta. So the cosine of pi over six, the coordinates of this point in the coordinate plane are cosine of 30 and sine of 30. Cosine of 30, it's the x, it's further away from half, so it's root three over two. And sine of 30 is a half. Going over to 150, the x coordinate is the cosine of 150. The number comes from the cosine and the 30, the reference angle, and the sine comes from the sine, positive or negative, comes from the quadrant. Cosine in the second quadrant is negative, so the coordinates of this point are going to be negative root 3 over 2, positive 1 half. So it's going to be negative root 3 over 2, positive 1 half. Cosine is positive when x is positive. Sine is positive when y is positive. So the coordinates for 7 pi over 6 are going to have the same values, but different signs. x coordinate is still negative, negative root 3 over 2. And the y coordinate is now negative one half. Swinging around to the fourth quadrant, the cosine is back to being positive, root three over two, but now the sine is negative because we're in the fourth quadrant, and y is negative in the fourth quadrant. So um, normally I would do the 60s next, but since I'm going to have to cram the 45s in between the 30s and the 60s, I'm, I'm going to do the 45s next. 45s are counting pi over 2 around the circle. So we know 45 is our halfway up. And as a, uh, in radians, it's going to be pi over 4. So here's 1 pi over 4. 90 degrees is 2 pi over 4. Over here, we have 3 pi over 4 at 135 degrees. Then we have. I don't know why 225 got such a big spot. 
it was too far up and then it was too far down. So I just kind of had to stop trying to fix it. So here's three pi over four at 135. 180 is four pi over four. So 225 is five pi over four. Six pi over four is down here at 270 and seven pi over four is over here at 315. So I counted my way around in pi over fours. We can also think that three, look at 315. 315 is seven times 45. So I got seven times pi over four. And then we need the coordinates. These are all gonna be root two over twos on both of them. But we're gonna change the signs and I'm gonna go backwards this time. I risk smearing things. But in the fourth quadrant, X is positive and y is negative. In the third quadrant, both are negative. And in the second quadrant, cosine is negative, sine is positive. Once again, what we're trying to do is make all, as many connections as possible so we can remember these things. So I can ask you what the sine of five pi over four is, and you can say quickly that it's negative root two over two. Remember what the aspects are that we need to, to, to put together for that. Next, we're gonna count around in 60s. So we have a 60 degree reference angle in the first quadrant. And 60 degrees is pi over three radians. So the next 60 degree angle is over here in the second quadrant. Oops, I spelled 120 wrong. So 60 is one pi over three, 120 is two pi over three because it's two 60s. Three pi over three is over here at 180. The next one is four pi over three at 240 degrees. Makes sense, four times 60 is 240. So it's gonna be four times pi over three. 5 pi over 3 will be here in the fourth quadrant at 300. That makes sense. 5 times 60 is 300. So 5 times pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. And then we need the sines and cosines. Then we're going to look at the patterns going around. Oh, we got to fill in the quadrants. So if this is looking like the circle of fifths, and if you were in a music class where you had to write down the circle of fifths incessantly until you could just remember it and remember it all in pieces in whatever order you start with, that, that's kind of what we're doing here. So the both are gonna be positive and they're gonna split, the 30 is gonna switch. So we're gonna have a one half on the X and root three over two on the Y. Going down here to the third quarter, I'm gonna, I wanna make a big X this time. So uh, in the third quadrant, the values will be the same, but they'll both be negative. Negative one half, negative root three over two. So over here in the, oh, I'm gonna do the second quadrant third this time. The values one half and uh, three halves are gonna be the same, but the X is negative in the second quadrant and Y is positive in the second quadrant. Oops. In the second quadrant and finally, in the fourth quadrant, the X is still positive and the Y is negative. Sorry, I'm sorry. All right. So my dog was upset because he couldn't get into his room and there's a toy that he wanted. All right, so now we need to go around and hit the quadrants. So here's where we couldn't draw an angle. So here we have zero degrees or 360 degrees. Zero, which is zero radians or 360, which is two pi radians. Now the coordinates here, these are just on the corners. So the coordinates there are zero, or X is one and Y is zero. So what this means is that the cosine of zero is one and the sine of zero is zero. If we go up to 90 degrees, 
which is pi over two, the coordinates of this point are one, uh, zero and one. I keep wanting to switch them, I don't know why. So what that tells us is that the cosine of 90 is zero and the sine of 90 is one. And then for completeness, we have 180 over here, which is pi radians. And the coordinates at this point are negative one, zero. And then down here at the bottom, we have a 270 degree angle, which is three pi over two. And the coordinates there are zero, negative one. So the reason that we had to jump into this unit circle for our trig values is that we couldn't put 90, 180, and 270 into a right triangle. Because if I have a right angle and I have, I definitely have a 90 degree angle. If the other angle is 90 degrees, I don't have anything left for the third angle because the sum has to be 180. So good thing we expanded this to the unit circle. So now we can see things like cosine of pi over two is zero, sine of pi over two is one. The next thing that we want to do, now that we've got this all filled out, is we want to notice, uh, we want to look at the, the graphs of cosine and the graph of sine, but I want to stretch theta, instead of go theta going around in circles, I want to stretch theta out along an x axis. And then we're going to plot some points. So what we're going to do is we're going to unroll the unit circle. We're going to stretch theta out onto a horizontal axis. So we're going to unroll theta onto a horizontal axis. So right now, I'm going to notice that I didn't use the graph paper side of my notepad. So whoops. We're going to have to trust my eyeballs to do this, which is really inconvenient. So we're going to make the graph of cosine. So on the horizontal axis, actually, let me. I have to evenly space some things and that's that just never goes well. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the graph of cosine. So on the horizontal axis, this is where I'm going to put theta. And on the vertical axis, I'm going to put the values of cosine. So I want to put the x coordinate up here because x is cosine of theta. Now I'm going to go, let's refer back to our unit circle and think, think about what's going to happen here. So I'm just going to look at the x coordinates as we go around the circle. So when theta is zero, we're going to start off at one. Then when theta is 30 degrees or pi over six, we'll be at root three over two, which is 0 0.8660. Then we'll be at root two over two, which is 0 0.7071. Then we'll be at a half, which is 0.5. And then by 90 degrees, we'll be down to zero. So it goes from one and drops down to zero. So we should see the cosine from drop from one down to zero when it hits pi over two. Then let's look what happens in the second quadrant where a cosine is at zero, then it goes down to negative a half, then negative root two over two, negative root three over two, down to negative one. So in the second quadrant, stretching this out, we're gonna go from zero down to negative one at pi. In the third quadrant, the x's, um, the x's go back up again, negative root three over two, negative root two over two, negative one over two, zero. So in the third quadrant, we'll go back from negative one up to zero. And the fourth quadrant will go from one, zero to one half, to root two over two, to root three over two, up to one. So in the fourth quadrant, the, we go from zero, uh, zero back up to one. And so that's gonna give us this down, down, up, up look. 
just tracking the X coordinate around the circle and stretching it out along a horizontal axis. I think this one is missing. I missed. Yeah, I did not spit these out pretty well. So notice that we're always between one and negative one. So I'm going to put a top at one. And here's the bottom at negative one. And once again, I'm just putting the x coordinates going around. Here's the point one zero. And then the graph is going to decrease down to zero at pi over two. So when theta is at pi over two, I shouldn't put these coordinates. So here we are at pi over two, and the cosine has dropped down to zero. And in the middle, halfway is at root two over two, which is a little bit ha past half. So here at pi over four, halfway up, it's 0 0.7071. At 60 degrees, which is a little bit past this, we'll be at 1 half. And then at 30 degrees, which is a little bit before the pi over 4, we'll be at 0 0.8660. So our graph drops down from zero at zero, uh, one at zero to zero at pi over two. And then from, that's the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, we go from zero down to negative one. Track the x's, the x's go from zero down to negative one. And that happens at pi. So cosine of pi is negative 1. Then at 3 pi over 2, or in the third quadrant from pi to pi over 3 pi over 2, the cosine goes from negative 1 back up to 0. And then at 2 pi, we'll be back at 1 again. At 2 pi, the cosine of 2 pi is back to 1. Now, if we track the x going around again, this is back to the start. We're back at the beginning of the unit circle, and we're just going to get a copy of this going around and around. So we're taking this circular uh, track going around and around, and we're just stretching it out. Here we are going around the circle. So we're just going to get multiple copies of this. So the, we say that the graph of cosine of theta is periodic because it just takes this and copies it, copy and paste, with a period of 2 pi. because 2 pi is how long it takes for one cycle to complete. In the middle, we can see how the bend is going to go. Here's our, here's 3 pi, this would be at 3 pi over 4. I'm just going to mark the middle ones because it gets messy. Here are, the, at 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, cosine has the same value both negative root 2 over 2. 
And then here in the halfway in the fourth quadrant at seven pi over four, we're back to the same value that we had at pi over four, positive root two over two. And then we can see before, as we drop down to the negative root two over two, uh, 0 0.7071, at the 30 degree reference angle, we'll be at negative a half. At the 30 degree reference angle in the third quadrant, we'll be at negative a half. And at the 30 degree reference angle in the fourth quadrant, we'll be at negative a half. Theta being measured counterclockwise is just the way we decided, we, like I was there. Um, theta being measured counterclockwise, I'm not sure that if we go back and rewrite trigonometry with theta moving clockwise, um, I don't really, I don't think it changes the perspective uh, that much, but no, I guess it would. So I'm gonna change my answer, yes. Which is a really strange thing because we don't want to stir things. Uh, you're, you you should be stir. You shouldn't stir things counterclockwise to the left. Because because folklore, you would not want to go stir things left because you're stirring evil into your food. That's why, like, if you were left-handed, you might and went to a religious school, you might have been forced to write with your right hand because being left-handed was apparently bad. People did weird things. I had the spots backwards. This is supposed to be. Oh, right, got it. That's fine. Any questions? Oh, it's these two spots that I messed up. I can't fix it now. Good thing I recorded all those mistakes. I don't edit my videos, raw video goes up, <laughs> that's all. So we say that cosine of theta is periodic with a period of two pi, because if we go past two pi, if we go past 360 degrees, then we're just gonna go around the same circle. We're just gonna do a copy of this same thing from two pi to four pi, and then from four pi to six pi. And even if we go backwards from negative two pi to zero, we'll have a copy of this same graph. One thing we also notice, since that we're tra since we're tracking the x coordinate and we're going around a unit circle, the x coordinate is never going to be bigger than one, or less than negative one. There's a, a, a maximum and a minimum value for this function. It's always going to be between negative one and one. The graph of cosine. So we also say that cosine has an amplitude of one. When we have these graphs, since they're just us, uh, since we're just tracking values around a unit circle, just tracking values around a circle, we can see there's a, a nice top, a middle, and a bottom. So we can recognize that there's a top, a middle, and a bottom. And the amplitude is just going to be the distance from the middle to the top or from the middle to the bottom. Any questions? This is step one, learning the graph of cosine by tracking x around the unit circle and So, so 
Uh, your turn. Uh, as soon as you, as soon as we drop off of the meeting today, I want you to draw one period of sine. Think about the top, the middle, and the bottom. Where does it start, and where does it end? So by one period, I mean from zero to two pi. or zero to 360 if you're still thinking in degrees. Although you should be practicing thinking in terms of radians. And you could do a similar thing to what we did for cosine. Go around the quadrant angles. Go around the quadrant angles. Start with the zero, 90, 180, and 360, uh, 270 and 360. And then track the sine through the quadrants. So in the first quadrant, what's happening to the y values? In the second quadrant, what's happening to the y values? In the third quadrant, what's happening to the y values? So my recommendations are start with 0, 90, 180, oops, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Think about what directions the y coordinate is going in each quadrant. And then connect them into a nice smooth curvy line. Any questions? That's stage one. Learn the graph of cosine and learn the graph of sine. Stage two, we're going to learn to adjust things. Because if we look out on the ocean and watch the high tide and the low tide, and then the high tide and the low tide, and the high tide and the low tide, it's not always going to be two pi uh, minutes, hours, days, whatever, between high tide and low tide we're going to want to adjust the period in some fashion. Also, it might not be one unit from the middle of high tide and low tide to the top. Maybe high tide and low tide are 10 feet apart. And so the distance from the middle to the top is gonna to be five on either side. So stage two is we need to learn, figure out how to adjust the amplitude and the period. So the next thing, when we're looking at a, gra a graph, So when we're looking at one of these graphs, this could be a graph of sine or cosine, depending on where we think of ourselves starting the graph. We know that there's a natural middle, a top, and a bottom. So there's a middle. There's a top. And there's the bottom, nice and evenly spaced about the middle. The amplitude is the distance from the top to the middle or the bottom to the middle. So the amplitude sits in here. What do we have to do to the, what do we do to the sine or cosine to adjust the amplitude. The period is, say, from the distance from the top to the top. That's one complete cycle. 
Notice that that will be the same distance if we go from the middle going up to the middle going up. or from the bottom to the bottom. Or from the middle going down to the middle going down. So one period goes from top, goes from the top to the top, from the bottom to the bottom, or from the middle going up to the middle going up, or the middle going down to the middle going down. So here are the ways I'm gonna describe these places where we're hitting the quadrants. We've got the top, the bottom, these two points I would call the middle going up, also a period between, middle going up, And these two middle points are gonna, I'm gonna to refer to those as the middle going down. So it's one period from the top to the top. It's one period from the bottom to the bottom. It's also one period between the middle going up and the middle going up. And one period between the middle going down and the middle going down. So here's the middle that's where the graph is, and it's headed down. Middle headed down, middle headed up. Here's the middle headed up, top, bottom. I just wanna bring, I wanna call out these things. These are things that I just start saying, and usually I don't define what these terms are, and then eventually like three days later, someone's like, oh, uh, what do you mean by the middle going up? I'm like, oh yeah, I never define my terms. Any questions? Also, I can never get the second period to look like the first one. This one got dented a little bit. Fix that a little bit. All right. So when we look at the, when we're looking at a function, ultimately what we want to look at is a function f of theta is sine theta or f of theta is cosine theta. What do we have to do to these functions? So each of these will have an amplitude of one and a period of two pi. How do we adjust those things? In both cases, the amplitude is one and the period is two pi. Other things that we're going to want going to want to learn is how do we figure out where the how do we move where the middle is? Right now the middle is at zero. So other things that we're going to want to be able to adjust if we want the middle to be somewhere other than zero. Right now the middle is at zero in both cases. And then we're also going to want to decide on where things start. It goes on forever in both directions. So but I think it's useful to think of the top, the middle, or the bottom as some starting point. Any questions? Any questions on straightening out the unit circle? All right. So 
the best place to go to explore how you can adjust things. I have a Rottweiler. He is a big boy Rottweiler. He's 123 pounds. And he doesn't like it when there's stuff going out on the street that he can't see. So he also doesn't like garbage cans. Because the garbage cans growl. You know what I'm talking about? Like the wheelie garbage cans. If he can't see them, then they're growling at him. And so he has to bark at them. And the problem is that every time he barks at the, dark, the garbage cans, eventually they stop growling at him. So he's like, oh, that works. And like the mailman shows up. And so he barks at the mailman. And the mailman does not come in the house and murder us. So he's like, oh, that's the result that I wanted. No one got murdered. So if I bark at the mailman, I saved you all, humans. This is, now I know we have graphing calculators. Graphing calculators are not really doing th for things like graphing. That's, that's a, they're bad at, at graphing. This is where you want to go. This is uh, desmos.com. This is a free graphing calculator. It's browser-based, so it's sitting right in your browser. There's also a free app. I think it's a free app for Desmos. Here's what Desmos looks like. So it's a nice free app. So recommend that you explore things like, and you could just type in functions. So like y equals sine x. It, it wants x instead of theta, so. Let me take a screenshot. So this is what the output for Desmos will look like. So start making adjustments to the sine x or cosine x, whichever you, however you want to make adjustments. And on Wednesday, I want to know what we have to do. Where does the amplitude show up in the equation? Because that's what we need to make an, a connection between. We need to make a connection between the graph, the numbers going around the circle, the graph, the values of sine and cosine and the equation y equals cosine x and y equals sine theta and cosine theta. We need to make a connection with those three things so that when we come up with a verbal description for some kind of thing that's going on, like the waves have a middle and a top and a bottom, we can use that information to construct an equation for high tide, low tide, and how long it's going to take and so forth. Any questions? Comments? Snide remarks? All right, so that's it for today. Figure out how to adjust your sines and cosine graph to get the amplitude and or period that you want. And then if you get that down, figure out how you can adjust where the middle is supposed to be. And then we'll talk about that on Wednesday. That's it for today. I'll see y'all on Wednesday. Thanks for playing.